Hi everyone, today we are going to be doing a, another GMIC tutorial. I'm trying to get these knocked out of the way. I fell a little bit behind on doing these tutorials. We should have, or I should have been way past the um, artistic group of filters already. Should have been way past that. Um, but I've been super busy with work and stuff, so I'm trying to get them knocked out now that I have some free time and Thanksgiving's coming up and all that kind of good stuff. So we are going to be making this image here. I used uh, four different filters uh, inside of GMIC today, and it's a pretty simple effect to create. We're going to go ahead and go over to the internet browser if I can figure out which one it is here it is and the stock image that we are going to be using is this one um, it's by Faye Stock uh, her name is Jessica uh, she is super super awesome she provides stock images and she provides a lot of them and she allows people to uh, use them for manipulations and stuff and she is awesome because there's a lot of people that would charge a super huge amount of money for what she's allowing a lot of people to do all she requests is that you link back to her and I don't think you could use her images commercially and if you do you have to get a hold of her so I'll leave this link to this image in the description below and you could uh, go right here she has this under all of her stock and you can just click on there and you could read her rules credit me uh, she allows tutorials and stuff anyways for commercial use blah 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 so she's awesome check her out and all right let's get back into the tutorial so there's out of all the four filters there's only one guy or one link that works the other three uh, I think out of all four of them there was only two that had links one of the links took you to a site that's no longer there than this one and then the other two don't um, and these links back to these pages, I, I'm guessing the reason why GMIC does this, sorry about that, I'm guessing the reason why GMIC does this is so you'll be able to um, post down here and ask the developer directly if you have any questions, so, I mean, which is cool and stuff like that, I just wish the, uh, they would leave you a little bit of read material, but anyways, you can come and check this out. And that is all we are going to be talking about on here. So let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. I'm going to go into file and I'm going to open up my recent image, which is this one. And as you can tell, this uh, image is 3400 by 4688. So it's a super, super large, super high quality image. I mean, Look at how far I'm zooming in before you get pixelated. So that's it's super awesome. She allows you to use it for free. So uh, check her out. So the first thing we are going to do, we're going to go ahead and grab our crop tool. And we're going to go ahead and crop the bottom of this out down here. So facestock.deviantart.com. And I'm just going to zoom in way in here so I have more control of this and I'm just gonna put it right on that black edge there and then zoom out I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom out by the way go ahead and hit enter and you could uh, watch some of my previous tutorials and I show you how to uh, change to where you're you don't have to hold down control and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out you can just go into your edit preferences and go into income controllers and double click on your mouse wheel I guess I'll just go ahead and show it then uh, for scroll up you'll just want to double click on that and you want to change it to this little icon icon that looks like a mouse wheel let's zoom in 
and then you'll want to do the same thing for scroll down alrighty so now we have this stock but it is super super large and uh, if you've been following along on any of my tutorials you'll know that some of these vmic tutorials on super large images they will take a super long time to uh, process if the image is really really large so we're going to go to image scale image and we're just going to click on the backslash and then two so we're going to divide it by two press enter and then press scale and it's going to scale that image way down there for us and this is a a super nice image and stuff like that she's already done the the uh, processing of the raw image and stuff to get it looking pretty good i mean you could go farther than that if you want to but i'm not going to do that we're just going to go down here and we're going to change this layer to Jessica and then we're going to go into GMIC so go to filters and then GMIC and we're going to go start out with uh, painting and I'm just going to bring it up to her face and then let that process and these are the settings that I had before so I had the abstraction at 3 detail si uh, scale at 5 color at 140 and smoothness at 189.78 and we're just gonna go ahead and reset this give it a second to work and as you can see it kinda makes a painting out of the photo but I don't like um, how bright and how big the uh, strokes are on this so we're going to take the abstraction and we're going to bring that down we'll just go ahead and type it in here to three and that gives it kind of a more better look the uh, red and stuff in there isn't so uh, dialed down and we're going to drop the detail size down also and so we get a little bit more of her eye and stuff in there. The only thing that I don't like is the way this uh, filter processes her lips. <laughs> kind of making her, um, I don't know, look like the Joker or something. And we're going to raise the color up a tad bit. Just to make the reds and stuff pop a little bit. And it also adds kind of this little glow here. So about 1.94 is fine. And we're going to raise the smoothness up. Just to give it more of a smoother look to the paint strokes and if we let's move it down a little bit you'll see that her arm does look like the um, there's a big old chunk missing out of that but that's okay because we're just wanting this effect here and we'll just hit apply and I have my output mode on new layers as usual and then the preview size is at small so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit apply here and I will uh, pause the video and come back after it is done alrighty it is done and we're gonna go ahead and hit cancel and go ahead and look at it and you can see that um, it kinda kinda made a cool effect like I said I don't know uh, how it figured in these details here I guess because the uh, picture was a little bit warm and, and uh, her arms had a little bit of orangish, orangish red in them and maybe that's how that calculated that um, but that's a cool looking effect there alrighty so we're gonna turn this layer off and we're gonna stay clicked on the main layer so let's go to filters gmic and let's click on pen drawing and let's click down here and let's move it up to her face and this is what I had the amplitude at uh, was 18.44 and as you can tell it kind of leaves a little bit of a blown out look and um, 
I guess that's what they were trying to go for because when you if you've ever drawn with a regular ink pen or something like that it it's a uh, it comes on kind of strong unless you're a super awesome drawer and then you can make it look cool but uh, we're gonna go ahead and click reset or I'm gonna go ahead and click reset and as you can tell you you don't notice very much difference but I just raised it up just a little bit so I could get more detail in there because like I said we're gonna be using layer modes to blend these in here and that's all there is to pin drawing so we'll just go ahead and hit apply and uh, I will pause the video and I will be back after it's done alrighty I am back and that one was pretty quick so we're gonna go ahead and click cancel and look at it and I really 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 like this effect this effect is awesome and um, the only thing I do not like about this effect is all these little tiny dots and uh, I, I learned this as a matter of fact I think I talked about this in one of my other tutorials that I wanted to award, award in school for my uh, dot shading so basically all it is is taking pins and making dots to create the image but anyways um, that's an awesome effect and if you look at it from far away I really love how it brings out the highlights in her dress and stuff and that could save a lot of time um, in dialing in the details and stuff it's just a really really awesome effect except for all these dots um, besides that it's a really really cool effect so let's go ahead and turn that off and let's go back into GMIC filters GMIC and here we come to the long one and it's called photo illustration and let's move up to her face just like that and these are my settings from before so I have the local contrast style at tone mapping soft local contrast effect at 0.56 I got smoothing style at anastropic I got contour pre precision at 0.38 area smoothness at 2.12 sharpening radius at 0.77 sharpening strength at 0.42 special effects at Orton glow uh, effect strength at 6.54 overall lightness at 4.49 overall contrast at 0.87 shadow lightness at negative point seven, uh, six nine. sorry negative 7.69 highlight lightness negative 7.69 midtone contrast 0.97 color green magenta zero um, I made this uh, part of this image more warm so I moved the uh, blue and yellow up to 5.13. I did a color boost at 1.67. Detail reconstruction detection at 98.50. Detail um, reconstruction smoothness at 4.87. Detail reconstruction strength at 0.55. The detail reconstruction style gritty. And I checked skin tone protection and I put the computation mode at high quality the reason why I went through these um, with you guys is because these are the exact ones that I'm going to use and I'm going to go ahead and hit apply now and I'm going to pause the video and I will come back after it's done and I will explain a little bit about these settings all right guys I am back and that filter took quite a long while to um, process and that's probably because I have uh, recording software open and then the screen recording software open and GIMP and all that kind of stuff um, but if I remember right it did take a little while when I did this without everything on also so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out just so you guys could look at that and then come back and explain this stuff really quick um, trying to make my tutorials a little bit shorter shorter because um, no offense but I'm tired of people complaining about how long they are um, all right, so let's go ahead and click. And as you can tell, that's that's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful effect. Um, the only thing that I don't like that maybe I would play with uh, when I have more time, but I was kind of going for um, blown out looks on all these filters so I could uh, 
because I knew that I was going to make the image dark. So I kind of wanted to blow some things out a little bit. That way um, she is the main attention that uh, we get in this photo. So, but um, that photo illustration is an awesome, awesome filter. And uh, I think you could come up with some really cool effects uh, if you just go in there and play with it a little bit more, which we will do um, pretty quickly. So, but anyways, I really, really think that turned out pretty nice. Uh, except for the masks a little blown out and the flowers a little bit blown out. But besides that, it's a, a really, really good and awesome filter. So let's go ahead and go back and click back on our bottom layer. And let's go back into filters, GMIC. Illustration. And then we're going to go to the polygonal line. Uh, po polygonized. <laughs> Man, I can't talk. Yeah, just like yesterday. Um, this filter, as you can t see, it just takes, if you do any 3D work, let me zoom out here just a little bit, if you do any 3D work, uh, you know you're working with uh, polygons, and so this kind of just goes and, oops, goes through your image, and it just, like you go in there and you add a layer of polygons on top of the image, uh, you turn the amplitude up, smoothness, and you can make it more rounded. I don't like that look. I like a more jagged and sharp, so I'm going to turn that down some more. And you turn the amplitude up, and that's just going to make these uh, go a little bit more wild. I'm going to tone these down just a little bit. And you got your minimal area and I guess I should have clicked reset shouldn't I I apologize and as you can see these are the details that it gets by default and those are pretty cool we'll just run through them real quick and uh, turn these up we got minimal area you can turn the minimal area up on just you know a small area of the image that gets polys on it I'm going to turn that back down to where it was and you can change the X resolution so you can make it go up and down or you can do the Y and you can make them go left and right so I'm going to turn those back down just a little bit gets a little bit of a change in there And we could leave these black, but I didn't want to because I knew that I would probably have to put the layer mode on uh, screen or something like that. So I opted for a red color. Uh, you could choose whatever color you'd like, whatever color you think is best. And that's pretty much it for the polygonal, I want to say polygonal, polygonized filter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and I will probably pause this and... I will come back after it is done. Alrighty, I am back and the filter has done its work and I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this so we can look at it. And as you can tell, uh, I went a little bit wild with them this time. Uh, last time I didn't do this. And on this image, it didn't uh, com compute in uh, with the image very well so you don't get too many details but that's okay because if you look on this one you can't really tell unless you're really super zoomed in and I just added that just to break up the image a little bit um, so kind of abstract but if you don't want to add that you don't have to maybe I will do a separate tutorial maybe a uh, maybe something with text or something so, alrighty, let's go ahead and let's turn all these on. We're done with GMIC now. So if that's all you're watching is just to take a look at these filters, you could go ahead and stop watching or you could um, finish the rest of the tutorial and make this cool image. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with this first one. And we are going to go ahead and check something here 
the very first layer is our Jessica layer. It's going to be normal. And then our second layer is going to be, uh, we're going to go ahead and put this on hard light. And we're going to go ahead and move down the list. And we're going to go ahead and set this to screen. And we're going to go ahead and set this one to soft light. And then we're going to set this one to screen. And you can see how it looks like that. But we're going to dial down the opacities uh, right now for these. And we're going to go ahead and actually I'm going to put this on multiply. There we go. That looks a lot better. And we're going to go ahead and dial this opacity down to about... And about 22%. Yeah, that's, that looks fine to me. And then, like I said, I just use that to break up up here in her. So let's go to the photo illustration layer and let's go ahead and dial this opacity down to about 81%. And then let's go to our pin drawing layer and let's we're going to leave that one at 100% opacity and let's go to our uh, painting layer and we're going to put this opacity down to about 60%. There we go. And so you can see that's already a pretty pretty decent look with just uh, messing with the layer modes on this but we're going to go a step further and we're going to go ahead and go up to the top the very top layer and then we're going to go to layer new from visible and we're going to call this uh b and c for brightness and contrast and we're going to go ahead and go to colors brightness and contrast and let's see Tone that down just a tad bit and that looks good to me so a negative 16 on the brightness and a 4 on the contrast and let's press OK and then let's go back up to um, down here and let's create a new layer and let's call it gradient and the gradient I'm going to be using for this is I'm going to be using this pinkish color. It's 8F0C53. And then I'm going to be using this kind of uh, tannish brown color. It's 8F8668. Then let's go ahead and grab our gradient tool. And let's just go ahead up here to the top. And then let's just drag down. A straight line to the bottom of that photo just like that and we're going to put this layer mode on multiply and we're going to dial down the opacity we're going to dial it down quite a bit to about about 20 percent i would say and then let's go to layer and new from visible and then let's go ahead and call this layer curves and then let's go to uh, colors, curves, and let's see, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. I got the, it's on smooth instead of freehand. And on the value, let's go to the red. And you see I put a point about right there in the middle and then I went about yeah, a little bit over the middle and I dragged the red up just a tad bit and then we'll go to the green and I put a point just a little bit from the midway point 
and dragged it down just a tad bit and then put one up here and dragged it up just a tiny tiny bit and then let's go to the blue and the blue I went to almost the middle and then I dragged it down and just kind of made this nice little loop here and then we went back to the value and then the value I dragged up just a tad bit and I made a slight slight S curve and drag down and then press OK on that curves and the uh, opacity is going to be around 76 percent so 75 76 percent and we're going to go ahead and go to layer new from visible and we are going to go ahead and keep that on normal and then we're going to go down here and we're going to make a copy of the pin drawing layer so just go ahead and duplicate it and then drag it all the way up and put it on top just like that and we're going to put this on soft light and we are going to dial down the opacity to about 50 about 5960 for this and as you can see that made the um, the highlights pop a super lot and that's the look that I was going for I think it looks pretty pretty cool now we're gonna go ahead and go up to image or I'm sorry layer new from visible and we're gonna have another layer stamp and then we're gonna go ahead and click on the new layer button and we're gonna call this one gradient 2 press OK and then we're gonna go down here and I have a gradient called deep C I'm gonna click on my gradient tool and just go from the top and drag down in a straight line and as you can see all the gradient is is a dark blue so I will grab my um, color sample tool and that dark blue is 01042E and then I will go down just a little bit to this lighter blue right here and it is 2D66A0 and then all the way at the bottom to this bright bright blue and that is 03EEF2 and all you have to do to create this is just go and click on create new gradient and then you can right click and here's all your tools to go ahead and change the colors and stuff here so you go ahead and add the colors right in here to go ahead and make that gradient so let's go ahead and close the tab and I'm going to delete that gradient because I don't want that yes delete all right so we are going to go ahead and put this on color and we're going to dial down the opacity all the way down to about nine and I just wanted to change that background uh, to a little bit of purple and add a little bit of uh, red to the image to go for the look I was going for and next we're gonna go ahead and go to layer new from visible and we are going to click on new layer and add a vignette and let's go ahead and go to tools GEGL operation click right here go all the way down to vignette and let's click here and the color that I'm going to use is let me see here zoom in a little bit here because I want to get some of that dark purple 
too light, too dark. You know what? I really think that it was this one right here. So it's 1B1722. So that's 1B1722. And press OK. Zoom out a little bit here. And let's put the softness all the way up. And let's put the radius down a tad to bring it in some. To bring it in some. Just like that. And we are going to play with the squeeze. Just a tad bit. Just like that, you press OK. So we got radius 1.45, softness 1, and we play with the squeeze to a negative 0.27. Press OK. And we're going to put this on multiply. Just like that. So it draws you into her. And then we are going to go ahead and go to layer, new from visible, and call this final. Okay, final. And if you want to, you could go up to filters, enhance, and you could do a sharpen if you want. Uh, I didn't really want to do this because, like I said, uh, one of the filters put these little weird bumps on here, uh, these white bumps, and I don't want them to pop. So I didn't do that, but you can if you want. Um, you could also go into color, desaturate, luminosity and you can turn this into a black and a white photo and then you could go into gmic and you could play with the black and white filters they have to get a pretty cool vintage look if you want but we're not going to do that so that's it i hope this was a good tour good tutorial for you guys and let's see um i don't know how long it's been going on now but been going on for a little while i tried to speed this up a little bit so i do apologize if it was kind of hard to follow along but um, like i said i'm trying to keep them a little bit shorter now so please like and subscribe for tons tons more tutorials it really really helps me out and thank you and have a great day